Hi, I'm Jay, and today we're going to add some stinger hooks to some jigs in preparation for adding bucktail lanes. Today we're going to tie stinger hooks and prepare them to tie onto the jig itself before we add the hair. The stinger hook that I use on jigs that size. Um, I'm using a Mustad 3399. Um, the line is a uh, 25 pound, uh, it's just the uh, Berkeley Trilene Big Game. Um, you could use something similar. Um, the same with hooks. If you have a uh, thin wire number six hook, um, would would work perfectly of any, any other brand. I snip pieces of line that are about five and a half, six inches long. Um, you can snip a whole bunch of these all at once or you can just do one at a time. An important thing to note about this vise is that the jaws are horizontal and parallel to the tabletop. This will aid with the tying of the line to the hook um, because all that pressure is just coming parallel to the table. Um, we don't need um, jaws that are at an angle um, like if we're adding hair on a, a dry fly or something like that. So we'll begin very simply. We're going to snell these. I begin by placing the tag end through the eye of the hook from the underside facing to my right and then I will bring the tail end and I loop it up and I put it in between my fingers so now I have um, the tail end of the line on the bottom of this hook shank and then I have the the end of the line on top of the hook shank in between my fingers. Then I can take that loop and you give it five wraps. Minimum of five wraps, six if you're comfortable with that. If you go more than that um, the line kinks up a little bit. Um, with this um, thickness of line again I'm using a 25 pound um, Berkeley Trilene and I use um, just a small pair of um, pliers to help grab the tag end of this line and I just can pull that knot straight nice and tight I can snip off this piece here and then usually just to save time I will snip off this line at roughly and all four inches. Usually when I'm tying for orders <clears throat> I will sit and I will tie seven or eight dozen of these and then just keep them in a box for whenever I get the need to tie up some bucktail jigs with stinger hooks. Here we go. Very simple. We're going to use size A thread. Color doesn't uh, matter. This happens to be orange. We're going to begin by locking this on in the center of the hook shank. About halfway down towards the bend. So I just added three or four wraps on top of that line. I snip my tag end and then I can with loose wraps walk it down to about the point of the hook. I have on the top of my vise some marks just for some measurements. Um, often I use that for hair for different lengths, but we also use it for the stinger hook. 
where we place this right on top. I have this spaced out so the third dot on top of this so the third dot on the top of the jaws here is where the point of my stinger hook rests. Um, another visual cue that you can use is when I lay the line on top there's just about an eye or an eye and a half width gap between the eye of the stinger hook and the bend of this hook. So you want all your stingers to be the same distance. Um, this is the length that um, I think works best. It's if if I tie this jig, the hair is going to extend to the end of this these jaws, so the hair will still be covering the stinger hook, but it still extends and gives you that second that second hook for those short biting fish. So I'm going to go back and line this up nice and straight and I'll switch my grip to my other hand. You can walk this, you can walk your line back up, touching wraps and occasionally you might need to stop and realign this 25 pound line to the very top of the hook but I am providing as much pressure as I can um, to bite into this fishing line and touching wraps so that when there is a fish on this trailing hook it acts very much like one of those Chinese torture toys where you can't pull your fingers out because the harder you pull, the tighter it becomes. So that's what's going to happen with these threads here. Now that I have this on top of the hook aligned nicely, you can see that this 25 pound test line um, extends past the head of the hook. That's where I can take my scissors and I will snip that so it falls just behind the head of the jig. I can finish with my touching wraps. And then I can with still I'm wrapping tightly. I'm, I'm putting some pressure on this but the I can return down towards the bend of the hook with some loose wraps and here you can you can just there's a choice here there's a choice I could stop this here and tie it off um, occasionally I will wrap it farther back to give this stinger hook less flexibility if if I lash it down closer to the bend of the hook um, there's not as much of a tail here um, but a little bit of flexibility I believe is okay. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to, to um, place that stinger hook um, if you had a big piece of worm night crawler on there. Um, you can put the hook in, in the, in the uh, bait, both hooks. Um, so I'm just going to walk it past, just two wraps past that first layer and then I'll bring it back, loose wraps just about a quarter of the way and just like with finishing off my collars I'm going to make a loop of thread place it under the jig and underneath my last wrap add four or five wraps towards the head of the jig you can snip your thread and place that tag end through the loop and pull it through. Now since this since this thread is going to be covered by hair, if you wanted to whip finish this by hand and just wrap it with your fingers or you use a whip finish tool, that's going to be totally fine because this is all going to be um, covered by hair and the knot itself is not holding that um, thread in place. Um, it is locked on because we did wrap it appropriately before finishing it off. 
but the final step is to take your head cement. I'm using a lacquer based head cement, thinned just so it will saturate the threads and soak through those two layers. Okay, so I'm going to take the head cement and I'm going to coat each side of that hook shank. If there's any drips, you can just smooth it out and let it saturate those threads. And there you have it. I'm going to set this on my rack to dry. And like I said, I'm going to sit and I'm going to do, uh, I have to do six dozen. So I'm going to tie all six dozen and then we're going to put some hair on them. And there you have it, a very easy way to add stingers to a jig head. You can follow me on Instagram at jisoutdoorsy. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed what we did here today. I will leave down below information on tools and materials that we used. And as always, tight lines. Thank you.